with so much joy because it's the kind of story we just don't talk about but it's the thing that should be celebrated there are a couple of verses that I always sort of stand on at times like this it says one says love your neighbor as yourself and the other one is let your light so shine before men and I think Mr. Bidding did that, but he didn't do it for honor. He didn't do it to say that I'm important. He did it because that's what his spirit led him to do, to help his neighbors in this wonderful community. Simple things, just didn't have a bridge. People were falling in the creek. What's the simple solution? Put up a bridge. People had to walk to the post office over in Salem because there were no house numbers. A simple solution, put up some house numbers. Sometimes we struggle to think about what can I do to make my life better or the lives of my neighbors better. If you just look around, there's something that can be done that's just simple to do. Open our eyes, love our neighbors, just as we would love ourselves. There is a saying my pastor says that's so true. He says, anything you tolerate, you will not change. Think about it. Anything you tolerate, you will not change. There's so much change we can do. Mr. Bidding has left a legacy for his family. Sometimes you don't think it's possible because you've never seen anything happen. You don't see anyone around you doing anything that you think change can come from but he did he did and it was so many years ago that it was forgotten it was never celebrated but that bridge made a huge difference in the lives of the people of this community so today we are celebrating that He's here with us in spirit. His family is here with us. Raise your hand if you're a descendant of Wayben. This is so beautiful, so beautiful. And I thank you. I thank you for keeping your history alive. Everybody has a story to tell. Everybody has a history. The one thing about African Americans, we need to tell more of our history. You need to tell your challenges and your triumphs. You need to share it. I have a plug. We have at the city of Winston-Salem the African American Heritage Initiative. It is a digital collection of life for African Americans in Winston-Salem. Each one of you, if you grew up in Winston-Salem, if you live here now, I encourage you to go to our website, post your pictures, 
post your stories, particularly about life that no longer exists here. So many of our physical structures have gone. So it's in your memories that you must bring to life what life was about. And when it's something as magnificent as this footbridge, <laughs> let me know. We'll see how we can promote it and get it out to everybody else. This morning, I am representing our mayor, Alan Jones, who's not able to be with us. And I'd like to share with you a proclamation. City of Winston-Salem, Proclamation, Office of the Mayor. Whereas, Mr. Wade Bidding Jr. Uh, Senior moved to Happy Hill with his wife, Josephine, in 1909 and appeared in the 1910 census, living at the bottom of Alexander Street. They are recorded living in a rear house without a house number, on a street without a name. And whereas by 1920, their family had grown with the birth of five sons and one daughter, living in an area plagued with rodents and mosquitoes. He organized the men of his church and together they drew up a petition convincing the city leadership to clear the creek bottom of overgrowth. And whereas Mr. Bidding was an advocate for his community, along with church members, he once again wrote up a petition to have the undergrowth cleared and a playground made for children and presented it and presented it to city leadership. And whereas in the 1930s, Mr. Bidding approached Salem Ward Alderman J. Wilbur Cruz about the need for a footbridge after Miss Ida Lee Potter fell in the creek and broke her ankle. As a result, of Mr. Bidding's advocacy, a metal truss bridge was built in 1936 at the bottom of Liberia Street. And whereas Mr. Wade Bidding Sr. was instrumental in having street names put up and numbers on the houses of Happy Hill, which led to mail being delivered to the houses instead of residents going to Salem Post Office. This tribute is a lasting testament to one man's efforts to improve the condition of his neighborhood. Now, therefore, I, J. Allen Jones, Mayor of the City of Winston-Salem, North Carolina do hereby proclaim Saturday, August 28, 2021 as Wade Bidding Senior Day. <laughs> Given under my hand and seal this 28th day of August 2021. My challenge to each of you is let your light shine before men. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. Change in our city is in your hands. You are change makers. Thank you. Ooh. I don't see any other council members here today. Have I overlooked anyone? I don't see any. OK. 
Okay. We will uh, have the ribbon cutting at this time. Uh, so I invite uh, Miss Alice and uh, Commissioner Ella Meath. Uh, I like uh, Miss uh, Amatua. of poetry will be Alice F. Bidding and the history, the family history um, will be provided by Paul F. Bidding, Dr. Paul Bidding and he will come immediately after Patricia Bidding and the singing of our Negro National Anthem. There's plenty of water if anyone would like water and other gifts. It's in the cooler to the right, I think, of Cedric Russell. But at this point, um, William Rock Bidding will provide the invocation. First of all, good afternoon to all family members, those that made it. I had a couple surprises. Uh, cousin Dot, which we call Nene, showed up, and I was glad to see her, um, but I really appreciate her making that, that effort to show. Now, this is the portion of our program where we will have an invocation. Let's bow our heads. Our Father and our God, Father, we thank you for this another day day which we have never seen before, and we realize that we will never see it again. But Father God, this day, we give you honor and we give you praise for bringing the family together. Father God, we realize that this may be the last time. So let us take this day and, re and rejoice that we have gotten together one more time. Father God, this is again a day of rejoicing as far as the family coming together. We came to honor our grandfather, Wade Bidding Sr. This was well overdue, but God has a way and he has a time. And this was the day and the time. With that in mind, I would like for everyone to come together in one voice and simply say, amen. I'm very honored to be here to do my duty. That is libation and very brief greetings. For those that don't know, I lived on Free Street, right across from a little brown store many, many moons ago. So this is really home to me. In fact, I remember stores on this street. Well, I won't get into that right now. I'm gonna go back. Uh, I'm gonna do my duty and get off the mic because it's hot out here. In terms of a libation though, you know, we have a tradition during the Juneteenth celebration and others we honor our ancestors. Today we're honoring Mr. Wade Bidding. Before he arrived, others came here from the East. So in honor of those who came from the East, we simply say, Ashe. And we know from the East we came from great civilizations. I give you one name, Mansa Musa, from the kingdom of Mali, was the richest man on earth, even today who ruled Mali from 1332 to 1347. I'll leave it up to you to go research his background. That was one of many. So I don't want our kids to ever think that we didn't come from greatness. We did not, we came from greatness and we are great today. We just have to realize it and start loving each other more instead of that other thing that we do sometimes. From the east to the west, we arrived over here primarily down in the Caribbean islands. That's where they trained our ancestors. We come what we called enslaved people. It was called factoring. Now, what we call the Caribbean islands today, they left that location. Many went to Brazil. They didn't come to America. So today, if you ever travel to Brazil and go to the Portuguese areas and celebrate those festivals, you'll see a lot of our culture in Brazil today. So we left from the east, came to the west. <clears throat> so for those who arrived in the west safely after that middle passage, 
and I've been to Africa in Ocean Slave Castle in Ghana and Benin. It's something I think everybody should experience because when you go there, you're physically in a location where your ancestors survived out of. Just think about that. They survived chattel slavery, reduced to an animal level, so that we could be here today as human beings. We should never forget that ancestral connection because that will inspire us when we feel a little bit uninspired. Just think about where you came from. So for those that survived in the West, through child of slavery, up through these 400 years in this country, I say, Ashe. And then in time, and by the grace of God, something called the Civil War occurred. And many of our people left the South and went North. Some call it up South, though. And up South, we found some more opportunities, and we survived there. We established some societies there to help each other from the South to maintain some kind of existence in the North. So we had all kind of little community clubs to help you transfer into the North safely. But it was struggles in the North too. I spent a little time in Chicago, in Cicero, Illinois, they hung one of our brothers, literally on a pole because he went into Cicero. So I don't want you to imagine the North was all that great because in the North we still had to struggle. So for those who went North, I say, Ashe. And then some of us came back home to the South. Well, we still today have an idea of reality when it comes to the Creator, Christ, Allah, Jehovah, whatever you want to call your Creator in the South, we have that flavor in our being because we grew up that way. Mama pulled me by my ear sometimes to make me go to Sunday school. <laughs> Bible study. Every Sunday, I'm in church at First Baptist Church with my mama. Daddy, it was a different story. But mama was there because mama's always there. Mama is the one that really molds society. And so my mother made sure I went to church, First Baptist Church. I got baptized there, and I didn't swim away like my cousins did in the pool. I'm, I'm serious. They really swam away from the preacher in the little pool in the church, you know, but that was the kind of community we grew up in. But in the South, we began to sort of reestablish our identity as a people. We are very unique people. We are very unique people. To survive what we went through, and then to incur Jim Crow for years and years and years and to come out of there with a human expression and to love each other, that's the miracle of God that we should be proud of. That's God's grace and mercy on us as a unique people. So we should never forget our survival in the South. My parents were sharecroppers. Before they moved from Free Street, they were in Society Hill, South Carolina, in the field, picking cotton and other products for the guy who owned the land. They got a share of the profit, but no money every year. Over and over and over again, they went debt to the landowner, the Coca family. I'll never forget that because my grandmama told me all about it. So for those that survived the South, those that are struggling today to make the South your reality, don't let people discourage you from voting. Let me say it again. Don't let people discourage you from voting. That's the way to quiet you, to silence your voice. God has given you too much favor as a people for you to be silent today. You got to speak up, sometime act up, and raise a little bit of heavenly sand. So to the people in the South, I say, Ashe. And in terms of a very quick, quick greetings, I just want to thank everyone with love for being here in the sun. Um, I have such fine members growing up in Happy Hill Garden. There were some girls down the street called the Mac family, a whole bunch of girls. In fact, just me and my brother General and my younger brother Bernard, it was just three of us, but a whole bunch of them. Around the corner was the best family. Oh, if you hit one best, you was in trouble. You had a whole tribe to fight. So, <clears throat> but all of that made us human, right? So we went to, some of us to dig. Some went to Mebbin. Some went to Columbia Hikes. Anderson Junior Senior High School, we got back together again. And we all came out as people who were gifted by God, by grace and mercy. Don't let us forget our history. Look at each other with respect. Honor each other with love. And let's be family again. Thank you very much. Oh, I forgot one thing from the counter to read to you. I apologize. I'm, see, I got all the emotion. I got myself all twisted up there. This is from Forsyth County on behalf of this event. And as your county commission, I need to read this and take my glasses off to read it because I'm of that age now. On behalf of the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners, I am honored to take this opportunity to join with others in recognizing the historical contributions of Mr. Wade Bidding Sr. and Bridge dedication to memorialize his community endeavors.
Mr. Bidding's work has outlined, has enhanced counties' lives of Forsyth County citizens through service and preserving the Happy Hill community, one of North Carolina's first communities owned by African American landowners. His efforts in establishing the Patterson Avenue YMCA, Happy Hill Gardens Park, Victory Masonic Credit Union for Blacks, and the but busy <laughs> corner store, should have been, well, they misspelled that, was a shining example of how hard work and service to others can foster a resilient community. Mr. Benning tirelessly worked as to acquire mail delivery to the Happy Hill community, served as a deacon, a de decorated mason and shriner, managed the Winston-Salem Pond Giants Negro League baseball team, and was the St. Andrews United Methodist Church choir director. Most importantly, he raised his family and educated his children in the Happy Hill community. Mr. Benning's determination and commitment to community itself creates his legacy as an incredible man who served with integrity and pride. We celebrate with you on memorializing the many achievements and contributions of Mr. Wade Bidding Sr. Sincerely, Fleming Alamein for Scythe County Board of Commissioners, and I give this to the family. I thought I saw another commissioner come in. Yes, Commissioner Tanya McDaniels in the back. Let's recognize her. Thank you, Commissioner, for being here. Next on the program, uh, the misprint, will be none other than Dr. Paul Franklin Bidding, who will provide a family his history acknowledgement and a few words of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. Good morning, members of the bidding family, uh, elected officials, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Permit me to begin by fulfilling the task for which I have been asked to come before you this morning, and that is to identify as much of the bidding ancestry as time and limited available information would allow, and I think we all know what I mean by limited available information. And the information that we do have, I have to thank my cousin Nathaniel Bidding for. He did the legwork to gather all of this, and he, he is simply due the, the credit. Uh, then, after which, I will go on to address what I take to be the significance of the life of Wade Bidding and his offspring to those who have come after him, that is, those of us here. Wade Bidding was born to Henry Bidding and Mary Bell Cowan on December 16, 1885. On February 22, 1909, at age 22, Wade married Josephine Steele, who was 20 at the time. Josephine was born on September 15, 1894. To this union, 10 children were born. There was first Leo H. Biddy, Uncle Leo, we know him as, who was born on June 12, 1910, and transitioned on February 12, 1961. Leo married Louise Mangum on December 22, 1954. Then there was Uncle Percy, Percy Biddy. And I remember Uncle Percy and I remember how sharp he always was. Never saw Uncle Percy without his shoes shine. Uncle Percy was born on March 21st, 1913, and he transitioned on April 28th, 1966. Also, there was Uncle Andrew, Drew, who was born on June 17th, 1914, and he married Kathleen Watts on March. They had their children, were Gloria Bidding Stinson, who was the mother of Robert Pete Stenson, 
Kathleen Stinson Jennings, Christopher Stinson, and Beverly Stinson Liggins. And of course, Ronald Pawnee Bidding. I did an interesting story about Pawnee. I, I lived in New York for about 15 years, and there was one other bidding in the, in the phone book. And people would come and ask me if I was, if I knew or relate, was related to that other bidding. I should mention, I didn't know him. And so I said, I don't know, I guess we are. Bidding isn't the kind of name that one would see regularly. And there were only two of us. And, and you know, Brooklyn is the fourth largest city in the, in the country if, if established on its own. And years later, at his father's funeral, there was Pawnee, and there was I, and we both knew each other through friends, but we had never met. Because Pawnee left Winston-Salem at a young age, I understand. So, so it took his father's death for us to come together. Pawnee is the father of Valerie, Gloria, and Ronald Jr. And then there's James Williams. There's Annie Bidding. Annie was born on April 12, 1915, but Annie had a very short life. She transitioned at the age of two on September 13, September 13, 1917. Then there was my dad, Paul S. Bidding or Paul Steele Bidding, who married my mother. And I should mention that Dad was born on July 3rd, 1916, and he transitioned on June 7th, 2004. He married my mother, Arnise Penn, and from that union, of course, here I am, along with my brother, James W. Sly. Tyrone Mitchell and Barry Mitchell. Following my dad Paul was Wade Bidding Jr. And Wade was born on July 9th, 1919 and transitioned on October 1st, 1999. Wade married Callie Hunter and from Wade and Callie's union came children Rock, William Bidding, we knew him as Rock, and he was just that. Jackie O. Bidding, Patricia A. Bidding, Estelle Lacey Bidding, Alice Faye Bidding, Nate or Nathaniel Bidding, Milton or Mickey Bidding, Veronica we've heard from, Bidding, Barbara Bidding Banner, and my friend and teammate, Grady Byers. Alberta Bidding Mitchell was born on January 7, 1920, and transitioned on June 26, 1990. Uh, Alberta married Joseph Mitchell, and from that union came Betty Bidding Ratcliffe, Dorothy Bidding Burrow, Robert Mitchell, Blondell Mitchell, Joseph Mitchell, Jimmy Mitchell, and Stephanie Mitchell. There was Nathaniel Bidding, who was born on February 13, 1922, and Nathaniel passed as a child uh, on the same year. I think he was only 10 months old when we lost. And then there was Aunt Madeline Bidding Hunter, who was born in 1923, and our dear, dear Aunt Kathleen Bidding Mock, we called her Aunt Cat. 
and Aunt Cat was born on May 1st, 1924, and transitioned on December 20th, 2013. She married Douglas Mark Sr., and from that union came Bryn, she's smiling, after she can still smile after how many years carrying that bail bag? <laughs> Brenda Mark Terry, Doug, or Douglas Mark, and Ward Mark, Chan, we called him. As I think of my ancestors and all that they accomplished in spite of their struggles, I am reminded of an experience I had some years ago, also, as 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 Dr. Elamin mentioned. And, and this story, he told the story, but I think it needs to be told again, and again, and again, and again. And I was reminded, and I, I, I think Brother Elamin told the story because you can't have this experience and not be impacted by it. Uh, so I am reminded of that experience, the experience I had some years ago while also traveling on the continent of Africa. During this trip, I had the opportunity to visit the slave castles. While housed in the slave castles awaiting their placement on the slave ships, even then one could hear their cries emanating from the walls of the castle. History has taught us of the pain they experienced during the Middle Passage, as Brother Alameen mentioned. As they lie in their own feces upon the slave ships coming to these shores. We also know the history of more than 200 years of chattel slavery, followed by another 200 years of Jim, Jim Crow with its genocidal practices, dehumanization, and nullification. The political, economic, social, and legal dimensions of this struggle is clear and has been well documented. But how are we, the present generation, to characterize this struggle? What are we to make of it as we move forward? Thinking on such questions, I am reminded again of the spirit of Sankofa. The spirit of Sankofa, as some of you may know, is depicted by a, and some of you may have seen it, it's a, it's a wooden figure with his head, a, a wooden figure of a chicken with his head turned backwards. And out of his mouth comes an egg, which is coming from the body or out of his mouth, but his body is moving forward. It tells us of the importance of returning to our roots learning of the accomplishments of our ancestors while continuing to move forward. So it, 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 it literally means return to fetch it. Going back, looking back, but not getting caught looking back, but continuing to move forward. As we look at ourselves and marvel, marvel at how blessed we are, we are forced to develop a mighty appreciation for the accomplishments of Wade Bidding and his offspring. It so happens that within the duties of my position as one of the, one of the, not the elder, but one of the elders of this family, Blundell, where are you? Betty is not here. As one of the elders of this family, I am often uh, I, I, I have often witnessed, I have been often witness to the many human dramas I see people working toward a myriad of goals and striving to be the best that they are capable of becoming. Yet, even as I watch, often advise and sometimes help, I am aware that while we may all share a common humanity, our individual lives vary greatly in a wide variety of ways. From the mass, a few people are singled out in our minds as being exemplary. These are people who live their lives with such dignity, morality, and honor that we realize at once that we are associating with someone who is very special. Not only in the work setting, 
but certainly in life as well. This is a truth that our experience affirms. Such a person was our grandfather, leader in the Happy Hill community and contributing member of the city of Winston-Salem, and we've heard the story. Now, when such a person has been taken from us, we know in our hearts that it is altogether fitting and proper to stand up and proclaim for all to hear that his was a life so well lived that it is worthy of note, worthy of respect, worthy of honor. When a life shines forth as a bright beacon and symbol of what we can accomplish in our imperfect world, we know that somehow we must extol that life's virtues and hold it up as a shining model for all of us who have come after. When a life is that outstanding, humankind is shaken by its loss, and we can do no less than speak out about it and honor it as we are doing today. This is why we gather together this morning, our dear, valued grandfather, leader, and citizen, Wade Bidding Sr. has been missing from our ranks for some time now. But we who are left are asked to remember what his life meant to this community, this city, and to all with, him, with whom he came into contact. We must, be, we must remember or be reminded of what he gave. We know what he did. We know what he was. We remember so well, and this morning we gather to express not only our sorrow that he is gone, but more importantly, to express our thanks and our deepest appreciation for the legacy of honor, selflessness, dedication, commitment, loyalty, and honorable service that he left us. Thank you, dear family members, cousins, and those of you, the rest of you here for this. Thank you to my cousin, to our cousin, for a thorough, thorough historical overview. Okay, with that said, we will move to a very important portion of our program. Uh, Patricia Bidding will lead us in our Negro National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoice. Rise high. 
our God where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. Thank you for that spirit of remembrance. Next on our itinerary, we have recognition of the generations of biddings who've traveled beyond, well, far beyond Forsyth County. Anyone who traveled from out of the state of North Carolina, please stand and be recognized at this time. <laughs> D.C., Maryland, recognition, thank you. Anyone who traveled outside of Forsyth County, please stand and be recognized. Woo Lynn Bidding, you can stand up. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, and all of you, um, I'm sorry, Ronald Bidding, our cousin Pawnee's wife is here, and her girls and granddaughter, son-in-law, thank you. Okay, in addition to the generation of bidding travelers, anyone who's a descendant, who grew up, who may have been born, raised here in the geographical Happy Hill area, please stand and be recognized. That's right. Trisha, why are you not standing? All the Happy Hill. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, we have what we've been waiting for. Poetry recitation by none other than the, the theatrical, vocal, Miss Alice Faye Bidding. Still we rise. Still we rise. Sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Just because I walk as if I've got all wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the frequency of tides. Just like hopes springing high. Still, I rise. Did you want to see me broken? Bowed head, closed eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soul for cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it off a hard? Just because I laugh as if I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your lies. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still like life, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance as if I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tides. 
leaving behind nights of terror and fear. I rise into a daybreak miraculously clear. I rise, bringing the gifts that Wade been in senior and my ancestors gave. I am the hope and the dream of the heavy hilled enslaved. And so I rise, I rise, I rise.